What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, I just got my hands on the new Blue Eddy AC200L. We're going to be checking that out today. This is the upgrade from the AC200P or AC200 Max. It looks very much the same, but internally they've made some pretty big improvements, some big upgrades uh, as far as power, charging, stuff like that. So we're going to play around with this. I'm going to hook it up to the heat pump just like we did back in the summer with the AC200P. First, we're gonna have to charge this. We're sitting at 91% state of charge. So we're gonna hook it up to this 800 watt solar array. Now that's one of the improvements right off the bat. The old 200P could only handle up to 700 watts. This one can handle up to 1200 watts, which is the size of this array up here on the pergola that ties into the solar heat pump. So we'll put a bit of charge in it while it backs up the solar heat pump. Uh, the main panels are gonna do most of the heavy lifting for today, but in the evening, we'll run it on the AC200L and just see how long we can go. So just like the other AC200s, this one includes your MC4 cables. It also includes a 12 volt car charger and a 120 volt wall charger. Now down here on the DC input, you can see they've widened the range of voltage accepted by this unit. The old one had a minimum of 35 volts input. This one you can go right down to a 12 volt panel. So that's good to see. It opens up some possibilities for portable uh, solar panels. So that is nice. We're going to get this hooked up to the main array, put a little bit of charge in it, and uh, see what we can get out of these panels. It's only about 9 in the morning, so I'm not expecting too much. But it looks like we're doing right around 473 watts, which is pretty good for this early in the morning. Being a Canadian like myself, we don't get a whole lot of good sun until around 10 a.m., so that's not too bad from an 800 watt array. So in the time it took me to go get this extension cord ran to the heat pump, it looks like we've gained 2% charge already, which is pretty good. We're still doing 488 watts input, so should be charged up in no time at all. I've got the cord just run across the deck over here to the heat pump. If you're not familiar with this channel or this heat pump, this is an EG4 solar hybrid heat pump. It is 120 volts. It's 12,000 BTU. I just have it on an extension cord so I can plug it into my deck and do little videos like this one. So we're gonna get the heat pump fired up. I'm gonna set it to 73, cause that's pretty much where I always run it. It's about 28 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So it's a cool day, but not too cold. It won't have to work too, too hard. So we'll go check in outside. So as you can see and probably hear, the fan motor is running. The compressor is coming up to speed. This is a variable speed compressor, so it takes a few minutes to get going. Um, and it is a solar priority heat pump. So it will be running mostly on solar right now. The AC200 is not going to have too much work to do just yet. The uh, bulk of the work will come for this thing tonight when the sun goes down. We're going to run it into the night purely on battery and just see how it does. So yeah, right now there's no AC output, but we'll give it a few minutes here and check back in. And there we go, we have about 120 watts pulling from the unit. Uh, now that the compressor is up to full speed for the demand, um, it's, it's needing a little more than the solar panels can provide at this time in the morning, so it is pulling from the AC200L. So just to show you how this thing works, I'm going to come over here and kill the disconnect for the solar input. That will put the solar hybrid heat pump into AC only mode and it will pull full power from the AC200L. So that should uh, put a bit of load on it here. Sounds like it is still running. Everything switched over automatically. So let's go check our AC output. And as you can see, we're putting out 717 watts while charging at 500 watts. So we could run a long time at this rate, but uh, we'll put the solar panels back on here eventually, let this thing come up to a full 100% charge for tonight, and we'll play around, do a couple tests on it in the meantime. And before I turn the main array on, I just thought I'd show you the heat output from this thing running purely on a Blue Eddy AC200L. You can see we're putting out around 107 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you are someone who's off grid or you have a small little cabin, a little heat pump like this and a battery backup system is probably the most efficient, perfect way to heat your place. Maybe a little wood stove for backup would be really nice for those cold days, but we'll uh, go outside, turn the solar back on, and then we'll do a couple other tests. All right, guys, we hit 100% charge pretty quickly on the Blue Eddy there. The heat pump is running pretty much all on solar, so 
I let it get a full charge, just brought it in here and making a little bit of breakfast for lunch. So I thought we would let this thing do some heavy lifting. We're gonna run the air fryer, should be around 1500 watts, and then a toaster, which I think should be about 750. So that's gonna put us pretty close to the 2400 watt total capacity of this unit. Now, another upgrade they made on this one is the uh, estimated runtime remaining. I really like to have that. The AC200P did not have it. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up the air fryer. See how much power that guy pulls. Yeah, we're at around 1500 watts, so we've got 1.2 hours remaining estimated on the screen. Obviously, we're only going to run for about 10 15 minutes. I got a couple hash browns in there, and then we will pop the toaster down when it's time and just see how this thing handles it. All right, guys, we are 10 minutes in on the air fryer. We've lost 10% of the battery, still pulling 1500 watts. I'm going to go ahead and hit the toaster and see what happens. Ooh, there we go. 2300 watts total very close to our 2400 watt total capacity so it should be able to run this for a while uh, i believe this thing can surge up to 3000 so should be no problem but we'll let that go for a bit and just see how we do all right guys breakfast is ready had no problem running both of those we ended up running it down to 87 percent fan was just barely running when i finished up really really quiet didn't even hear it couldn't hear it over the air fryer obviously but uh yeah, fan ran for just a couple seconds after we finished, and it's already shut off. All right, guys, I got breakfast all cleaned up in there. I'm going to put a little power back in the AC200L for later this evening when the sun starts to go down. We will run the heat pump into the night, see how we do. I just wanted to point out another area of improvement over the 200P is they've eliminated this big charging brick. So you could charge the 200P at around 380 watts, but you had to take this big 48 volt uh, charging brick with you anywhere you went. So on the 200L, they have eliminated that. It's just a 120 volt power cord. And they've also managed to get it just about a half inch shorter. So they've uh, reduced the size of it just a tiny bit and left you with just a cord to plug into the wall. Now they've also upgraded the charging input from, like I said, about 380 right up to 1200 watts. So you can charge this thing really quick. You can see it's saying about 20 minutes left there to charge. Um, huge improvement. I think a, uh, Blue Eddy has really kind of figured out what their consumers want. They've done a lot of changes that people have recommended over the years. So uh, that is really good to see. Now, another cool feature of this one is this expansion port. On the 200P, you did not have this option, so you can get those stackable batteries. I'll put the links to those below. You can uh, basically add capacity as you need with this. You can start out with one, and as you grow, you can add batteries to the system. And they've also got a grounding lug here, which is really cool. I'll probably take that inside and try that out on the furnace. That's handy for uh, sensitive appliances that need to see a good ground. So, um, yeah, we'll let it charge up for a little bit and get ready for sundown. Okay, well, it's just after 6 p.m. We are sitting at 37 degrees outside. We hit about 40 this afternoon, so temperatures in the house got up to 72. Heat pump's been off for about an hour, hour and a half, so we are going to head outside, get the AC200 all hooked up, and get this test going. All right, as you can see, it is dark outside, no solar helping us run. I've got the AC200L plugged in. It's as simple as that. It's one of the main reasons I bought a 120 volt heat pump is doing stuff like this. It's a little more versatile than running 240. So we are going to get this thing turned, just facing the patio door here so we can kind of keep an eye on it as it runs. They also have a pretty good app. I'll show you that here in a minute and we'll get this thing started up. Okay, the heat pump is up to speed. We're running at about 775 watts. Blue Eddy is showing two and a half hours remaining, but this is a variable speed compressor. It is going to ramp down as the temperature in the house starts to come up. So we'll keep an eye on it every hour, hour and a half or so, and just see uh, how it goes. Okay, it is 7.45 p.m. We've been running for an hour and 40 minutes. We're down to 56% battery, and I just caught this thing coming out of defrost. So it's showing about 50 watts right now because it just finished up a defrost cycle. It's gonna sort of ramp back up here in a couple minutes. So we'll watch that. It's gonna go into high demand again because it has to play catch up after a defrost cycle. So it'll probably ramp right up to 750, 800 once again, and then should level back down. I saw it around 450, 500 watts before uh, it did go into defrost. So looks like we're doing good. We should be good for around three hours by the looks of things so uh, we'll keep you posted here and check back in shortly 
Okay, so the heat pump has ramped back up. We're pulling right around 800 watts now. Like I said, it doesn't do this for long, only about the first five, 10 minutes after startup or a defrost cycle. So I was just going through the app here. There's a couple pretty cool features in the Blue Eddy app. You can see you can turn on DC and AC. There's a little more to it. We can go into the settings here and actually change stuff like the eco mode. That was one of the big complaints on the 200P was how much this thing consumes when it's just sitting there idle. So they've put selectable eco shutdowns. You can change the minimum threshold for wattage to shut this thing down. If it's just sitting there idle, you can change the time. You can do that for AC and DC. You can also do uh, the UPS mode, which is a pretty cool feature. You can leave this thing plugged in with something like a freezer or a furnace plugged into the unit. If there's a power outage, it will automatically switch into UPS mode and your appliance will just carry on unfazed, unaware that anything has changed. So that's a really nice feature for like a freezer or a sump pump, stuff like that. I'll probably do a video on that in the future and uh, see what this thing has to offer. Well, it's almost 9.30. I've been keeping an eye on the app while I was laying in bed and we're getting very close to the end of the battery. So we're going to call this test quits. I'm going to pop outside and just show you what's left on the 200L. So the unit did ramp right down. We're running around 380, 400 watts right now, which does give us about another half hour of runtime. But as you can see here, we're sitting at 9% battery. Uh, yeah, down to 338. So the unit's ramped right down. The temperature in the house is 72 degrees right now. A little bit of frost starting on the outdoor unit once again, but I'm gonna call it quits there. That's a pretty impressive runtime. And if you were to have one of the additional batteries, that would get you most of a night, uh, keep you off, you know, your wood stove, your propane, whatever your backup source may be. So. Really, uh, really good test results from this one. I'm going to take it into the garage, show you a couple more things, and start to wrap up this video. Well, guys, overall, I'm very impressed with the new Blue Eddy. It's held up really well with the testing so far. AC200P still does a great job, but uh, they've packed a little more punch into this one while making it just a little bit smaller. So uh, I'm probably going to do another video on this one. I'm really curious to try out the UPS mode. I might hook it up to my furnace and see how it does with the uh, circuit board on that thing. Some of those furnace boards are pretty particular with their power. So uh, yeah, I'll have a link to this down below as well as the batteries, some other stuff from Blue Eddy. So feel free to check it out if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.